Senior correspondent Jeffrey Brown has been with the PBS NewsHour for more than 20 years. And while that nightly news program has gone through a regular evolution over the past few decades, the changes over the last couple of years have been remarkable, as journalists have taken the quality content that viewers expect from each night's news broadcast and have expanded it into a 24-hour news presence available online at the PBS NewsHour website. Jeffrey Brown visited Wisconsin recently to meet with Wisconsin Public Television supporters, so we caught up with him in Madison to ask him about those changes at the news hour, to see how the internet has affected his job as a television journalist, and to find out how he's been a proponent for arts coverage within the traditional news scope of the PBS news hour. You've been with the news hour for about 20 years now. 22 years. 22 years. Of this week. Excellent. Happy anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. I think <laughs> that's a long time. I would not have imagined that when I started. I can tell you that. And I know the program has evolved through those whole 22 years, but there's been some marked changes over the last couple of years. Um, and I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about those changes and how you've seen them play out now, and since you've had some time to sort of get into the groove. Well, the new version of the News Hour is to become the PBS News Hour. And the idea there is to create a kind of new program that can uh, maintain the values and, and uh, all the things that we've done over the years and point us away toward the future, which we all hope to have. So there's various things that the viewers can see. There's a co-anchor system, uh, uh, Jim Lair, Judy Woodruff, Gwen Eiffel, and myself. Uh, there is more reporting from the field, particularly Margaret Warner, Ray Suarez getting out all over the world to do the most remarkable things to get out into the world. There's a huge online component, Hari Srinivasan that we have doing our news and also lead, kind of leading the way online. Uh, we all play parts in that. I do my uh, art beat blog online, but we think about the whole program now as both a, a, a kind of seamless web as much as we can between the program and the uh, online news hour. Excellent. And I, I think some of uh, the folks here in Wisconsin would appreciate hearing, what's the, what's the, a typical day? I know there's never a typical day in the news world, but, mm -hmm. but for you, what's a typical day in the news hour and how you create an hour-long program on a daily basis? Well, what, what the way it works is that we come in around 9.30 in the morning. Now, the first big event that happens for us is at 9.45 every day. We have a, a, a senior staff editorial meeting. And that's where we kind of come in and, and say, okay, what's happening today? Um, we, we come in often, we have ideas, you know, we've sort of, we have some things that we think might happen, we have some stories we've been working on, but it's a daily news show, right? So the first thing you sit down and say is, what's new? So uh, we bat around a bunch of ideas at that meeting, we talk them over. Um, out of that meeting we make some preliminary decisions, and when I say we, the final arbiters at our program, it's still Jim Lair and our wonderful executive producer, Linda Winslow. And so we make some early assignments. So in a typical day for me, uh, I'll get my assignment for the day at about, uh, whatever, 10.15 when that meeting ends. Um, I join in with a little team of people that's going to be working with me on a particular story. So whatever it is, let's say it's on the economy, there's a, there's a team of people, uh, producers and the off-air reporters and, uh, all and the online people. We get together and we talk over what it is we what do we sort of need to know to get started and who's going to do what and we plot out the day and and then things develop throughout the day. Uh, I'm, I'm reading things, I'm talking to people, I'm working with our people on the staff, we make various decisions along the way as a program, like are we still doing the right stories, you know, that little stuff, you know, that happens during the day, what's new. Um, for the particular segments we make decisions about how we want to do it, uh, who we want to end up interviewing. And uh, that goes on through the day. I personally, um, if I'm, as you know, most days I'm doing something live on the show. So there's a certain point where I take all that I've gathered during the day and I sit down and I close the door and I, and I write out my questions and sort of gather my thoughts and figure out how am I going to do this. And that might be, I don't know, four o'clock in the afternoon. Five o'clock, it's time to go downstairs. Uh, go, uh, I put on my tie usually at five o'clock, I go to makeup, I get made up, six o'clock when we do a live show, six to seven every night. Excellent. And tell me about, you, you've mentioned the web in, in a number of instances now. As a reporter, how has the web shaped both how you 
send information out, but also how you are gathering information on things are breaking it so quickly and you have access to that breaking information so quickly. Yeah. Um, well, of course, for us, as with everybody, this has changed enormously in the past few years. Uh, we had, a, we were, we, we had a, a news hour online for a long time, but we didn't really work well together. You know, it was sort of like there was the television, there was the news hour over here, and there was the news hour online over here, and the twain did not meet all that often, you know. That was a long time ago. We've slowly done better uh, at, at bringing things together, and one of the most interesting and, and best for us changes of the past six months or a year is to totally incorporate things. I mean, literally, physically, putting the everybody together in the newsroom. I mean, you can't overestimate how important that is just to have people there. So, when things happen, you know, when there's a really uh, heartbreaking story, it's just been fascinating to watch the new ways that people are getting information. I mean, some of the, you see people on the phone, and that's the way we all used to get it. And uh, some of us are on the wires, you know, and not the, that's, that's on the computer. But there's a whole group of people, and all of us are learning to gather information through social media, through Twitter, through what have you, um, to bring in information. So that's the information gathering part. And then there's the putting it out online. And nowadays, almost everything we do, uh, we think about what's going to be the television part. We think about what's going to be online. We, 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 we incorporate it uh, to a, a, a rather remarkable degree in a way that I, I don't think any of us would have imagined even uh, five years ago. So everything I do for television, um, there's uh, usually a component that goes online. And many things I do during the day, because you asked earlier about how the day is spent, just go online. Yeah, so it, it, it creates a uh, medium uh, for the viewer that this is much more of a 24-hour news hour than a, uh, here in the central area, 6 o'clock news hour. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, we, we are, we, 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 we've always been a one-hour program. Well, that's not the world anymore, right? So we, we prepare and we still do this one-hour program every day for, for broadcast, even though we know you know, of course, we know that people aren't sitting down to watch at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. or where, wherever uh, it, it's seen at different times around the country. People are using their uh, DVRs, right, and watching it at different times, or they're watching it online. So that part of the world has changed. But the online news hour, uh, as a kind of ongoing, updated newscast, in a sense, turns it into a, uh, a never-off, offline uh, news organization. Sure. Um, with public television being such a wide-ranging, uh, decentralized uh, system, how does the news hour tap into the, the local um, resources that say here at Wisconsin Public Television, where so many new, uh, public television stations have their own news gathering operations? Are there ways that you're able to tap into those and use those as resources? Well, that's something we've given a lot of thought to, and that's changed uh, an, again enormously over the last few years, where uh, we reach out to the system in ways that we we, I don't think we, we did enough of in the past. I think we realized that. Um, and so we know the talents that are out there and the resources and the local coverage of things that we are just uh, cannot possibly know about or cover ourselves. So we do a lot more work with the local stations nowadays, again, on and offline. We have a new project that we've started called News Hour Connect. A lot of that is on online right now, but on the air as well. So we're constantly reaching out to the local TV stations, particularly the ones that have local programming, news and public affairs shows. Um, one of the things we regularly do now on the television program, and I've done a number of these interviews, where we have uh, public broadcasting reporters from around the nation uh, on any given subject. Um, in the past few months, it's been uh, the housing crisis or the jobs situation or the campaign, of course. So I might sit in Washington in our studio and we'll have four or five reporters from around the country representing geographical diversity, representing various kinds of uh, the diversity of the news, you know, where's housing getting a little better, where is it still bad, uh, what, what, what are we seeing in the job situation around the country, and I'll interview the reporters around the country. So that brings us a tremendous new, uh, great resource that's out there. Um, 
You mentioned the news hour error. We talked about the news hour being becoming a sort of 24-hour service online, but we also live in an environment where 24-hour uh, news services on cable are increasing in scope, but also in volume. It seems like. Uh, where do you see the news hour fitting into that type of a media environment? Well, in, in, in one answer to that is that the news hour is what it always was. And another answer is that it has it changed and evolves, uh, it changes and evolves as this uh, as this new uh, news environment has, has evolved. Um, it's a 24-hour news environment. Uh, we are bombarded with information. We are bombarded with uh, a lot of it is opinion journalism, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. And I think uh, people should go to their different sources and hear the opinions and hear strong opinions. Some of it is uncivil, uh, some of it is shrill and loud. If people want to go to that, that's fine. It's, it's out there for them. I think what we can provide in, in, in that environment is a, um, perhaps a, a more um, civil place to come and hear, still hear strong opinions, um, but also get some solid reporting as well that perhaps help people judge those opinions that they're hearing. Um, we still want to be the, the thoughtful place. We still want to be the place that provides uh, the time that stories require. Uh, we want to be the place that, um, that, uh, that allows the reporting to tell those stories and to tell the, the stories uh, at the local level, at the national level, and increasingly at the international level because one of the things that's, even though there's 24 hours of information nowadays, there's not a lot of reporting about international affairs anymore. That's one of the problems of the economics of, of journalism have changed. So that's, uh, that's always been important to us. Uh, it's increasingly important to us. So there's various ways we fit into that system, uh, things we've always done before. And I would argue that uh, there's never been as, uh, as much a, a need and uh, um, sort of a role for, for doing what we do. And in speaking of that diversity of coverage and switching gears slightly, I know one of the areas that you cover and that you're passionate about is the arts. Um, and you've started the Artbeat blog um, at the NewsHour uh, website. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how the blog came to be and then how you've uh, watched it evolve and, and what people can find there on a, on a daily basis, how it relates to the NewsHour content? Mm -hmm. Well, the NewsHour from its very beginnings uh, incorporated culture and arts and that, that's a tribute to its founders, McNeil and Lair. They're both writers, they're both uh, you know, men who, uh, who will go to the theater and uh, watch movies and, uh, and, and read books and uh, and, uh, and, and so they wanted to be part of the show from the beginning. Um, when I, I, there was a certain point where I got an opportunity, as first as a producer, not on camera, to take the arts under my wing, something I always loved just as a, as a person, you know, as a citizen. Um, and I've come to feel strong, I came to feel strongly, and it just grows and grows, that, that that's an important part of a well-rounded person, a well-rounded citizen and therefore should be a part of a newscast. Um, that if we're gonna cover the news, uh, we need to cover the politicians, we need to cover the generals, we need to talk to the business people. We also need to talk to the cultural, what I think of as the cultural newsmakers, the writers and artists and actors and musicians. Um, Artbeat came about, uh, maybe it's a year, two years now, in this sort of transition to a new rethinking the news hour. Uh, to rethinking a way of, of uh, having the show work with, uh, with our online news hour. And it occurred to me that um, this is an important part of what we do at the news hour. It should be an important thing that we do online. And um, what I did was uh, I put out the word to uh, sort of internally, uh, we have a small staff. So I just sort of said, hey, does any, is anybody interested in, in uh, helping me on this? And a lot of people, uh, especially the young people on our staff, who were looking for opportunities to do some interesting things along with what they were doing, because we all sort of do Artbeat on the side. <laughs> I got to tell you, I mean, we have a, you know, we have enough work to do putting together the show every day. But this is something that we are committed to and that we try to have fun with. So uh, we have something up every day. Uh, that was one thing we decided early on was if we're going to make this work, we need to offer something every day. And now we got to the point where there's often two or three things up every day. 
people on the staff can uh, do uh, write their own stories. Uh, more and more we get people out with cameras to do uh, video pieces for the blog. Uh, and my part is to uh, host, but also one, two, three times a week I do an interview with somebody uh, that's specifically for the blog. And for me it is just fun. Um, television, you know, still requires the equipment, even though the equipment's gotten lighter and it's easier to move around. Um, for online, sometimes it's as simple as in the middle of the day picking up the phone and having a, a, a phone conversation with a, you know, a great writer, a great director, uh, a thinker on some subject. And you know, what's hard about that? I mean, that's just a pleasure to do. And uh, sometimes we bring, when one of the things we do is when people are traveling through Washington, uh, writers on tour say, we ask, can you come over to, this, to the studio? We pull them into our station, into our, uh, um, into our studio, or we do it in our newsroom. We do a little interview and we put it online. So it's fun, uh, it's, a, you know, it's an extra component. We're building, I think, a new audience online we're building an audience that is both program on the television for the television program and online we'll see what happens but it's it's growing very nicely